Hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> I really didn't think I would be here, you know, today, just talking to you guys, but I'm back. I, you know, after four years of not doing anything, I've finally come back. So, yeah, I'm back. I, this is basically like a little hello, like a little weave back and forth. <laughs> but it's not just that I like to talk about, but... I, I mean, I really just want to get into the the nitty gritty, you know, why I'm here and why I'm talking and why I'm back, you know, but I mean, the real reason I'm back is because I think it's my duty, you know, to reach as many people as possible, but for what is the better question? And the answer is for Jesus Christ. There's no getting around that. <laughs> and there's no going under that. The answer is for Jesus Christ. That's that's why I'm back. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm looking here. <laughs> but, yeah, and that's why I'm back again. You know, over a year ago, I became a born-again Christian, and... Let me tell you, it's a completely new experience. You're like a new person, exactly what the name suggests. You know, as Jesus said, he said, you know, unless a person is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And as confusing as that was to Nicodemus, it totally makes sense once you're a born again Christian. But I'm a born again Christian now, I... I'm filled with the Holy Spirit of God, and I, I'm changed and transformed every day, and it's just amazing. But, um, I, I wanted to talk to um, a minority group today, and I thought that the best people to talk to were my kind of people. I, I just wanted to reach out to those who are just like me, a teenager or a young adult in their 20s. You know, I'm 19, you know, <laughs> not that old, but, you know, uh, yeah, they're young like me in a generation that is slowly going away from God. We're, we're a very small minority, and it's, it's scary sometimes, so I just wanted to reach out to those individuals. And the first question I wanted to ask, which is a good question, is it worth being a Christian? Are there benefits? Do I get anything out of it? And the answer is, well, yes. There's always benefit being a Christian. You know, the only benefit that most people see is, you know, well, you're a Christian, you believe in God, but there's there's so much more to that. If you're really a Christian through and through, then you have accepted Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal Savior, and... You know, you have felt God's change in your life. You feel it. You, you, you don't do things the same way anymore, and you just feel free. And, you know, and that that is the greatest gift you could ever get. And Jesus said one of his parables. He said that the kingdom of heaven is like a, a man who discovered a, a pearl in the field, and he, and he uncovered it, and he sold everything he had. He reburied it too, you know, just to get that one treasure. And that, that is what Christianity is. It's that hidden gem. That's that, the Holy Spirit, which is that hidden treasure, which transforms us and helps us walk into the call that God wants, you know, in our life through, you know, sons of God because of Jesus Christ. That, that is what God wants. That is the real benefit. It's not a, you know, a short-term benefit like a lot of people think, you know. I'm not going to get richer, I'm not going to get, you know, stronger physically or anything like that. I'm not, no. But what I am going to have is the assurance that when I die, somebody will be there. You know, I will not go to hell or any horrible place when I die. I will be with God again. And that was what Christianity is about, is that long-term benefit. That's a long answer to the question, but yes, that is the real benefit. There is a benefit to being a Christian. So that brings me to my next question. 
Is it worth being persecuted? Is it? The answer is still yes. But we live in a generation that is afraid and scared and not ready to stand up and do things like that. We're kind of afraid. I mean, we could lose a lot. There's a lot on the line. We value our lives more than we value God. But there is every benefit in being a Christian, and there is every benefit in being persecuted. You're not a Christian less because you're persecuted. You're even more a Christian. Paul is our greatest example of suffering. Jesus told Ananias that he would suffer gratefully for his cause, and he, you know, he was a a martyr through and through, a witness to Jesus Christ, and he suffered, you know, and he proved the truth of Christianity. It's not about having good times, it's about everything. Paul learned, you know, in the end of the, not in the end, but during his first imprisonment in Rome, that it was about contentment. That's what he told the Philippians. He said it's about contentment, where you have more than you need, and you contend in that, and you have less than you need, and you're starving, and you're still content. But, you know, when I became a born again Christian, my first idea was, I gotta tell the people that aren't Christians the miracles and the, the wonderful feeling of being a born again. It's not just some fantasy land, you know, in the head. It's a real thing. It's in here, in your heart. It's not outward. It's in your soul that changes. And that's what really is a change. It's not your face. Although I have been told that I look younger recently because of that. Well, it is because of that. But I have been told I look younger recently because I've been a working Christian. But it's in there. And, and when I talk to these non-Christian friends of mine, it was the hardest thing for me. I wasn't introducing some cultic practice. You see, I'm the kind of guy who likes to help their friends through their problems. And that's what I did, you know. I, I, you know, I've always tried to help people. It's what makes my life feel happy is when you help people. And I get a satisfactory feeling, as you should, you know. Morality and you know, all intents and purposes included, you should feel happy helping people. So I... That's what I did. I said, oh my gosh, I need to find an answer to help my friends, you know, who are, who are struggling with depression and anxiety and, you know, everything in between, you know, as a, a teenager and a kid in this new generation. It's very hard. So I looked around. I said, there's got to be something. So I finally found Christianity as being that. And I've already been a Christian my entire life, but I wasn't a Christian, I, I, that was just a title, it's a name, you know, I don't act like it until now, you know, so when I finally found that to be true, I went to my friends that weren't Christians, I said, look, I gotta tell you the, 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 the greatest thing that has happened to me, and that's finding Christ, and I needed them to know that the answer to their problems was Christ. And all of my friends were not having that, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm, I, as far as they're concerned, I'm explaining just an opinional truth, but it really is the truth. I mean, our perception of reality is the greatest way to tell us whether or not something's true. We rely on our gut instinct, and that's what we usually do. And when you first become a Christian, a born-again Christian, you will notice, you will feel it. You know that Christianity is true. It's not just an, an opinion. And you could argue it based on general truths and proofs, but you feel it. So, yeah, I, needless to say, I told a lot of my friends. There were some who were interested, you know, and, and, you know, and I piqued their interest. And I'm glad I did, but there are a lot that I lost. And, you know, I, I've been called a lot of things. I've been called a, a cult, you know, member, and I'm not. And I'm getting a little emotional here. I've been called a Jehovah's Witness. I, 
I'd be called brainwashed, stupid, crazy, you know, and it's hard. It's hard. I'm getting a little emotional over this, but I'm, it's really hard because those were my friends, you know, that I held very dear to me in my, my life. It's the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, man, the Holy Spirit will get you all sorts of emotional and feeling, which is good though, but. Those are my friends, you know, and I, I, you know, I feel like Paul right now I, I, with, you know, the Jewish people. He says, I'd be willing to cut off myself for the sake of Christ, you know. You know, I feel that extreme, but yeah, I, yeah, I was rejected from my own friends, you know. I, Jesus felt the same way. He, he was rejected by his own people. He was a Nazarene, and the Nazarenes did not except Jesus, they said, oh, well, yeah, yeah, we don't believe you. And he says, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own country, in his own family. So he didn't really do a lot there, but most of my friends deserted me. And, of course, I tried to go back and, you know, try to tie up some loose ends, and but there's nothing to tie up. I mean, the truth still stands. They're not going to become Christians, and so, what do you do? I mean, to answer the question, is it worth being persecuted? It is. As for your friends, you're going to lose a lot more than just your friends. You're going to lose your life. That's what Jesus said. He says, if anybody wants to follow me, they must hate their own life. You know, not because he wants you to be suicidal, but in comparison to him, you must hate everything. You have to be prepared to lose everything for him. Because anyone who's going to try to gain something will lose their life. And anybody who loses their life will gain it. But I lost my friends. And I don't talk to some of them. And But there's nothing there anymore. I mean, you should never sacrifice your beliefs for your friends. You should get sacrifice yourself. Maybe because of your beliefs. But don't ever... Sacrifice your beliefs because of your friends. If your friends do not accept the fact that you're a Christian, then you need new friends. You don't really have any topics to talk about. There's only one thing that matters, and it's Jesus Christ. And if they cannot accept that, they don't want that, then that's fine. Yeah, sure, maybe, you know, you don't have to, you know, defriend them. And you can still talk to them, small talk, but... They, you know, you shouldn't expect them, and they shouldn't expect you to be talking a lot now because you found what matters. That's what Jesus said to uh, Martha. He said, Mary has found the good part. She's found what matters, and it will not be taken away from her. So when you lose friends and family because you're a Christian, because you believe in Jesus Christ, it's worth suffering for. It's this cause worth suffering for. I'm not crazy i'm not looping the head you know you know I'm, there's you know this is the truth and it's changed my life it's made me into a better person and i feel happy you know like it's, it's just, you cannot describe it in human words it's a divine thing that happens but it is totally worth losing your friends over because not because you're proving a point but because you're living the truth. You shouldn't sacrifice the truth for the sake of people. You should always hold to, true to the truth. And if you have to lose friends, and it's a hard thing, and I, I know what you're feeling, because I feel myself, so be it. You, only, you always will have one friend who will stick with you through and through, and that's God. God will always be with you. Jesus will always be with you. The Spirit will always be with you. You will always have these things. So you don't have to worry about friends. I mean, friends are nice. <laughs> but just remember that. If you're persecuted by your own friends and family, those close to you because of your beliefs, you know, endure the persecution. It's hard. It's, it's horrible. It's, it's not fun. You know, it's no masochistic thing. It, it really hurts to be persecuted. But when you're persecuted, it means you're following the truth. If you're persecuted for being a Christian, you're following the truth. The apostles were actually um, whipped 
um, for preaching Jesus Christ is the truth, and they were happy because Jesus himself was persecuted for preaching the truth. And, uh, you know, so what I've covered is that it is, yes, indeed worth being persecuted for, and it, it is worth being a Christian. You know, you're a little, we're kind of like an underground society, but we're not cultic in any way. You know, if anybody is a non-believer studying, uh, stumbling upon this, we're not cultic. We're not, we're not anything like that. We just, and, it's, and we're not trying to force our beliefs on people. I, I wish people would see that, but, you know, we're not. What we are trying to do is to tell you the truth because we love you. If you discovered that truth and we didn't know, you would want us to know, right? And that's why we're telling you. Because we love you and we care about you. This is our duty to preach the gospel. So we are. But yeah, so the, the, those of you, you know, you are, you know, like an underground society, you're not alone. Seek fellowship with other believers and, you know, people like me, you know, will help you we, we need to stick together as a community for our for us christians you know it's a very hard life it's the persecuted minority especially in the middle east but just know that you're not alone and it is worthy just to, to suffer for god's cause he doesn't want you to suffer mind you but it is a noble cause to worth dying for because you're dying for the truth you know, I mean, if we could give a smaller example, let's say, you know, I don't know, that's nothing smaller than that. I mean, it's nothing I'd die for besides the truth. But, you know, like say, um, I don't know, well, let's say you get in trouble. Okay, so let's say um, you knew somebody stole a cake. And it's not really a great example. I can't think of examples on the spot. Let's say somebody stole cake and you notice they stole cake and you're questioned and you say, well, if you knew they stole the cake, you're going to jail. You say, well, I, I, I did, you know, and you be, you know, you want to take the consequences because you're telling the truth. It's easier to tell the truth than tell a lie. It's hard sometimes to tell the truth, but it's better to tell the truth than a lie. Because a lie it gets really complicated. You've got to remember what you said constantly because you people can catch you in lies if they're paying attention. They say, wait, didn't you just say that? And you're like, oh my goodness. But it is always worth, you know, being suffering for the truth. And I just want you guys to know that. So, well, uh, God bless and take care.